The celebration of Metal Gear's 31st anniversary rages on with more hints of the upcoming Metal Gear movie. The Time Splitters IP may be in for a revival. We also pay respect to the passing of two anime legends and much more in this week's collection of The Rundown. The celebration for Metal Gear's 31st anniversary continues with Kong Island's director Jordan Volk Roberts, who posted a tweet featuring a conversation from Solid Snake's voice actor David Hayter and Ocelot's actor Patrick Zimmerman, talking about the series' long history along with a few humorous quotes from the original Metal Gear Solid, as well as thanking fans for sticking with them and amplifying the franchise's legendary influence that it has today. Last month, one of Robert's tweets featured Roy Campbell's voice actor Paul Eiding assuming his role in a codec call announcing that Roberts would be releasing concept art to help celebrate the franchise's anniversary, which may or may not be concept work for the upcoming movie. Roberts also announced that the reworked script for the movie was now finished, saying, I think it's one of the best scripts I've ever read in an interview with GameSpot. Now, I've been around since the very first day a Metal Gear Solid movie was even mentioned nearly two decades ago, and it's been this up and down roller coaster of it's happening and it's not, to the point where any excitement I could have had for it is all but died in the many years that followed. But I'll admit to probably being there day one should it actually come to fruition. There's an intruder. <coughs> Really? In an interview with Edge this week, Yakuza series creator Toshihiro Nagashi talks about some of the trials he faced when pitching the series to console manufacturers and trying to net a publisher to finance the game. Claiming that no one but Sony was willing to give him a chance on the game, and that even the series publisher Sega was hesitant on approving it at first. Sega was struggling for cash and was very close to bankruptcy, he said in the interview. He also stated that he did two presentations to his bosses and still didn't get approved. He went on to mention that while Sony happily gave him the chance, he had also tried for Microsoft and Nintendo, to which neither wanted anything to do with it. Now they want it, he said jokingly, but they didn't understand the reason why I created it. He went on to talk about the new Yakuza project he's currently working on, saying he hopes to reintroduce Kiryu-san to new fans by adding new mechanics and features to the game. I found this interview to be quite endearing and informative about just where the industry was at the time he tried to pitch the game. Sega was still coming off the heels of getting out of the console race, and after Shinmu flopped, I could see why a game that is very similar in nature would make them cautious. Yakuza at its core is essentially a modern day Shinmu, and has basically succeeded where they failed. You can check out the full interview following the link in the description. Earlier this week, THQ Nordic announced that their subsidiary, Koch Media, had acquired the Time Sweaters IP and had purchased the rights to the Second Sight series. Time Splitters was a sci-fi arcade first-person shooter created by former developer Free Radical, of whom staff was eventually absorbed into Crytek UK. We have many Time Splitters fans among the staff who are passionate about creating a product that will thrill today's gaming audience, said Cock Media CEO, which all but confirms a new product coming eventually, whether that be a new game completely or remasters of the previous three games, something that THQ Nordic is known for doing at this point after its Darksiders and Red Faction remasters. Upon seeing this news, my first reaction was excitement, but then I stumbled over a few important questions. Just what is a new Time Splitters at this point? How do you modernize that while still keeping its identity in the sea of shooters that have thrived since its heyday? A Time Splitters 4 was announced over a decade ago, only to never have been in development. Should they pick up where Free Radical left off or reboot the series? The anime world was stricken with sadness this week, as famed Japanese voice actor Unsho Ishizuka passed away at age 67. For those unaware, Ishizuka's voice work ranged from Jet Black in Cowboy Bebop, Professor Oak in the Pokemon animated series, Mr. Satan in Dragon Ball Super, and Old Joseph in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stardust Crusaders, and Diamond is Unbreakable, and much, much more. His passing was on Monday this week due to esophageal cancer. His late relatives held a private wake and funeral with a public farewell ceremony in the works. It was also revealed from the Aoni production studio of which he worked that he had been receiving medical aid for some time. Sadly, none of it helped. It was also stated that his work in the recent Pokemon Sun and Moon anime would run through until October this year. I imagine many of us here in the West probably have no idea who he was unless you've been watching some of the aforementioned anime in Japanese. But suffice to say that anime voice acting has lost one of its greats. His talent will be sorely missed.
イガーッついにみんな暑さのせいでおつむがやられちまったかトーガーシャイガーヘルプミーオーマイガーあんなさっきの素敵なお方今度はこんなところまでなんて大胆なアプローチでしょうんちょっとホレッシーあのババ As if that news wasn't depressing enough, legendary mecha animator Kunihiro Abe has also passed away this week at the age of 50. His passing was announced on Twitter by his wife and daughter on their respective Twitter accounts. Also, for those unaware, Abe san was well known for his animation work on mecha anime such as the Gundam series, Gundam 0083, Gundam Wing, and Iron Blooded Orphans, to name a few. As someone who has watched most of the Gundam anime in which he contributed to, you tend to not notice the work that goes into animating mechanical objects and machines until you're shown the amount of work that goes into it. You gain a new level of appreciation for those that can pull it off, and it opened up a new level of respect for me to Abe san over the years. Yet another amazing talent lost that will certainly be felt for many years to come. Lastly, to round this thing off on a more positive note, One Punch Man Season 2 gets a new teaser and is confirmed for April 2019. Teaser includes the introduction of a new villain to the fold by the name of Garo, who appears to be taunting Saitama, claiming that he's simply not strong enough. Personally, I enjoyed the hell out of One Punch Man. As a hero that doesn't start out weak and eventually gets strong, but starts out strong, has grown tired of his strength, and is looking for a real challenge, which is part of what the whole series is about. Someone or something finally giving him the challenge he's looking for. I've been avoiding reading the manga for the most part, but a new villain throwing down a gauntlet against our hero is certainly something to catch my interest, so I'm looking forward to it. And with that, we've reached the end of yet another edition of the rundown for this week. If you guys have anything you'd like to add to the news discussed in the video, please feel free to comment below. Also, like and subscribe if you happen to enjoy the video. As always, this is Corrupt Roland telling you to stay sharp, assassins, and I'll see you next time.